anybody who has the nerves to call toughness and and the desire to seek power and status anybody that has the nerves to call that toxic should f off you guys are so you, a bunch of hypocrites hey guys going on megan here all right i had to come back out of hibernation early because of something that blew my mind um but anyway this is what society thinks is toxic right look at this picture here being tough being stoic being strong being bold being dominant society calls that toxic masculinity right meanwhile the opposite of those traits right being soft emotional weak faithful submissive society sees that as a good thing now prior to this when i when i heard the term toxic masculinity believe it or not i actually thought that that meant somebody who's you know engaging in sexual assault sexual harassment bullying you know that's what i thought they meant when people said toxic masculinity which is why you know i never paid it any mind because i was like yeah that's definitely toxic but you would be surprised at what the actual official definition of toxic masculinity is let me show you guys but before i start here's a disclaimer again i do not promote in fact i'm vehemently against any form of sexual assault domestic violence bullying misogyny racism any form of hate towards any innocent person or group and i'm gonna explain my innocent to the contrary i believe that all men should strive to be heroes and selflessly sacrifice themselves for the good of mankind through acts of service and bravery that's what team duty offers all about right diamond has discipline and direction um i gotta put a disclaimer out there because nowadays you guys already know the cancel culture likes to straw man you so they can cancel you right so that straw man what you're really trying to say and then it gives them a reason to try to cancel you they're like oh this guy's promoting this this guy's promoting that so let's get the disclaimer out the way now here's the part that blew my mind and i was like man i gotta i, I gotta come out of i gotta come out of hibernation um if you go online and you type toxic definition of i mean official definition of toxic masculinity this is what pops up read this guys a cultural concept of manliness so far so good that glorifies stoicism um how's that toxic strength let that sink in strength is under toxic masculinity virility so your ability to obviously clap cheese and pass on your genes right being a fertile man um dominance um and again it put that is socially maladaptive or harmful to mental health that is the most hypocritical definition i've ever seen i could not believe this if you don't believe me go online and type official definition of toxic masculinity because what we're not going to do is like bef before i make a video i want to make sure that i'm not straw manning my position right so i looked up a different definition this one was on some website called very well mine or some shit like that i just picked, i just clicked on what pops up first right because when most people are searching this is what pops up and i put toxic masculinity is in about be anyway skip all that look they put some researchers have come to agree that toxic masculinity which would be a bad thing right has three core components one toughness let that sink in for a minute toughness is seen as being toxically masculine this is the notion that man should be physically strong emotionally callous and behaviorally aggressive uh anti-femininity -femin this involves the idea that man should reject anything that's considered to be feminine so to show an emotion or accepting help um, now again, they're mixing a bunch of stuff here. Keep in mind, guys, men have evolved to compliment women. There's a reason why we're different than women. Is because what's the point of a man if you're not somehow different to females, right? That's literally why we evolved. That's why we have Y chromosomes, right? We're supposed to compliment women, and you can't compliment somebody if you exactly like them. That makes no fucking sense. But anyway, uh, and power. This is the assumption that men must work towards obtaining power and status so they can get the respect of others. So they're saying that this is bad. The desire to, 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 to become powerful, the desire to uh, amass wealth or status, they're pretty much saying that this is a bad thing. And let me show you why this is the most hypocritical thing ever. It is so wrong and it's causing more damage, more harm than good. Right? So they're pretty much saying that this guy here is bad. He has toxic masculinity, but this guy here is good. That's what society, you know, actually wants you to believe. Because let's be honest, the guys who are out there defending us, the guys that are out there securing our borders, the guys who are out there making sure that your your wives, your daughters, your sisters are not being invaded by some foreign country, the guys that are making sure that the moment any <clears throat> foreign power tries to step foot on American soil or wherever nation you're in, 
right? The guys will make it so that we can actually sleep at night. You, be, you, you better believe that they're not soft, emotional, weak, faithful, and submissive, right? Else they never would have made it up the ranks. These are the guys that we owe our freedom to. These are the guys that we owe, you know, believe it or not, our safety, our well-being. These are the guys that nobody talks about. Because you guys know, you guys know I'm a history nerd. I study history so much for the last what, 18 plus years. And one thing history teaches us is that you cannot afford to be weak. You cannot. You could be the nicest person on earth, but you cannot afford to be weak because the guy on the other side is more than willing to cross over your territory and take everything that you hold dear. This has happened time and time and time again throughout history. You could have a nice, peaceful society, but if you do not have strong men, dominant men defending that society, you get your cheeks clapped by the conquerors, right? The enemy comes and then they take all your shit. And you're not going to have time at the last minute to be like, all right, all right, let's quickly transform all of our soft men into monsters. No, they better be monsters by the time the enemy comes. But anyway, let's keep going. Right, these are the. This is what society wants you to be like: a smeagol motherfucker, right? Soft, emotional, weak, faithful, submissive. But somehow this is frowned upon. Make it make sense, guys. Right. But anyway, let me show you guys ten reasons why this is all bullshit. Number one, bullies. You see, a lot of you guys out there, a lot of the guys that that support, you know. The idea that men should be weak and we shouldn't be tough and we shouldn't, sh you know, we should show our emotions. A lot of you motherfuckers were never bullied. See, I was bullied when I was a kid, right? Guys, remember, I was an immigrant, right? I came in when I was 11 years old. I was bullied like a motherfucker. In fact, the reason why I'm as tough as I am now is because I was bullied and I decided to stand up for myself, become stronger, look my bully in the eye and shut him down. See, boys have to deal with bullies and the teacher is not going to save us. Right? Our parents are not going to save us. I actually had to go home to an abusive mother. So that was even worse. The biggest bully in my life was actually my mother. But that's a, video, that's a different video. Right? Most boys out there, most men out there, we know what it's like to grow up and have a bully in your neighborhood. It is frightening. It, you, you, you feel worthless. You feel powerless. Right? And the only way I personally broke out of that was by toughening up. Right? Boys have to deal with bullies before we become men. Right? And like I said, the teacher doesn't save us. Our parents don't save us. The principal doesn't save us. Right? If you go and tell the teacher, hey, this kid is bullying me, they don't give a fuck. They'll just like slap the, you know, give the bully slap on the wrist and then you still got to deal with him. Right? True men know what I'm talking about. In fact, almost every tough man that I know was bullied at some point. And it is that experience that actually turned him into a fucking alpha. It's when he said, no more, never again. Right? So you want to talk about how toughness is a bad thing? Stoicism is a bad thing? Kiss my ass. Right? Because you guys weren't there when we had to toughen up. In fact, it's toxic masculinity that saved us. In fact, I'm going to make a video soon called Toxic Masculinity Saved My Life. Because if it wasn't for the ideal, if it wasn't for the belief that I had to be tough, that I had to be strong, I would have probably committed suicide a long time ago. Right? Bullies have to deal with bullies. And you overcome bullies by... By becoming mentally tough, by standing up to them, by becoming strong, right? I remember I had a bully. You guys, remember, I grew up in the inner cities. And there was bullies everywhere, on every block, right? We couldn't even go to the playground, right? I couldn't even go to the playground without running into bullies, right? And I was bullied from the time I was 11 all the way until I was about 13, 13, 14 is when I finally decided to stand up to my bully and he never fucked with me ever again, right? Think about it for a second. The one time when I finally decided to stand up to my bully and say, you know what? I'm tired of going back home, right? No one is helping me. I'm going to put this into my own hands. And I was terrified when I did that. When I stood up to my bully, I was actually fucking terrified because I thought I was going to lose because my bullies are never alone. They're usually in the group. But I was like, you know what? I'm so sick and tired of, 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 of losing this thing. I'm going to stand up and fight. And believe it or not, that's when the bully finally respected me. Because in his mind, he actually thought I knew how to fight. Believe it or not, I actually didn't know how to fight. But I put on that confidence. I was like, fuck it. I'd rather go down and get my ass whooped than run away. 
and it's a long story. I could make a video about that. You know, he tried to jump me, but it didn't work. And then after a while, people came to my defense and blah, 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 blah. And since then, when he would see me, he would just not say what up. You know, so don't tell, don't tell men that they have to be, oh, they have to be emotional and, they have, they, they, you know, they have to cry and they have to show their emotions and, and, and they have to be soft. Kiss my ass. Toxic masculinity saved my life. Right. So telling men out there that it's OK to be soft, it's OK to cry, it's OK to 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 be weak. You shouldn't be strong. You shouldn't seek power. You are setting them up for failure because it doesn't matter. I don't care how good your intentions are. They still have to deal with things like this. They still have to deal with bullies. They still have to deal with the fact that the world is not peaceful. The world is not safe. Right. And the world will eat you alive if you are weak. Only the strong survive. I know you guys want us to be in a utopian world where, yeah, you know, no, no. We can't, as men, we cannot afford to be weak. We can't. We just can't. Because nobody comes to our rescue. Like I had to learn years ago. The second reason why toxic masculinity is needed, again, using your definition of toxic masculinity, right? People saying that toxic masculinity means you tough and you don't show much whatever. When there's a criminal at your door, who do you call? You call the police. Is the police made up of feminine, soft, weak men? Or is the police force made of dominant, strong, powerful men who are ready to vaporize this fool? Which one is it? See, make up your mind, right? And I'm talking to the people who are against tox- you know, who are against ma- masculinity. Because let's be honest, they, they say they're against toxic masculinity, but in definition, they're really against masculinity, period. You know? When is a criminal at your doorstep? Who do you call? Do you call your pastor? Do you call your mother? Do you call the nurse? No, you call the police. And the police doesn't send you a pastor. They don't send you a a minister, a a priest. No. They send you violent men. They send you men who are ready to put this guy behind bars, right? And obviously, over 80% of the police force are men. There's a reason for that. Men are bigger, stronger, faster. Duh, you know, obviously. And also, men are willing to take more risks, right? I remember one time, what was this? Um... I was in a Starbucks, and a crazy guy walked in, right? I'm not going to say who I was in a Starbucks with, but a crazy guy walked in. Uh, he was a homeless guy, but he, you know, he was not okay in the head. He walked in, and I was the only guy in the Starbucks. I was sitting down, talking to a friend. Um, oh, fuck, I gave it away. <laughs> but anyway, I was sitting down, talking to a friend, and um, uh, I was the only guy in there. There was only about, like, I think three, four other women, you know. And the guy walks in, and he's just tripping balls, right? He's no homeless guy. He's crazy. He's talking to himself, whatever. And at that moment, I realized, holy shit. If he pulls out a knife and starts stabbing people, I'm going to have to get up, put my life at risk, and restrain him. I have to. I have no other choice. Right? And I don't mind. I don't mind. I remember, I believe men should be heroes. Right? Now, imagine if I decided not to. If I was like, you know what? If he decides to attack everybody, I'm just going to scream and run like everybody else. Uh, the video would have went live and it would have been like, oh my God, there was a guy in there he didn't do anything. The same people who say that we should be soft and submissive and weak, whatever, are the same ones who would have dragged me through the dirt and said, oh my God, breaking news, a homeless, crazy son of a bitch walked into Starbucks, started pulling out his knife or his penis or whatever and started stabbing everybody. And there was a man in there, he didn't do anything. He screamed just like all the other girls. Right? And I realized, yeah, man, we have to deal with this. We are expected to perform. We are expected to be, uh, 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 you know, to show our toxic masculinity only when it benefits others. What kind of hypocrisy is this? You can't have it both ways. Either you want us to be strong, dominant, powerful, protective, or you want us to be weak. You can't. It's not an on and off switch. Right? And of course, I was going to body that guy. I was going to fold the shit out of him anyway. You know, if he, if he tried anything, I was going to fold him because of my own values, not because it's expected of me. That's the point I'm trying to make, guys. The reason why you motherfuckers are safe is because men, strong masculine men, are keeping the bad guys away. As corny as that sounds. You enjoy... It's funny, I, I, I see people going on, on, on news networks and talking about, oh, masculinity, toxic masculinity, so bad. Yet, yet the person, the, the woman who's saying that, or the guy who's saying that, you're driving through a street free of criminals. You got to that station, new station, whatever, without having to worry about your safety or your life. Why? Because toxic masculine men keep you safe. So the, the hypocrisy. Let's keep going. Next. 
who protects us from invaders? Once again, if you study history, you know that the history of mankind is the history of conquest, the history of war. Tribes got conquered one after the other. Once the barbarians come in, they kill all the men or they enslave the men. They rape the women. They rape the daughters, regardless of age. They kill everybody. They enslave you. Rinse and repeat. That's literally history in a nutshell. Every tribe had to go through that. Every nation had to go through that. Right? The reason why we don't have to deal about this today, once again, is because men who are powerful, who are strong, protect us. Right? Over 90% of the elite military are men. These are the guys that keep us safe. And what are they? Are they feminine or are they masculine? You tell me. Who would you want to protect you? You see, I, it's, funny, it's funny, I always joke around my friends and I say, society complains about toxic masculinity until there are barbarians at the gate. I repeat, society complains about toxic masculinity until there are barbarians at the gate. Because I guarantee you, if we become invaded by some random country or whatever, or uh, all these guys who are like, that, who are like, oh, men should be soft, men should be weak, men should be emotional, whatever. They're going to change their mind. They're going to be like, oh my God, save us. What's going on? Save us. Fuck you. You know? Our borders are safe because of masculine men. And history does not lie. If you are not strong enough to protect your borders, you were conquered, you were enslaved, your mother, your daughter, your sisters were raped in front of your very eyes. So the reason you are safe today, the reason you could go on YouTube today, or on the news and say that men shouldn't be too masculine is because masculine men made the world safe. Hypocrite sons of bitches. Next, starvation. You might think, well, what does toxic masculinity, what does masculinity have to do with starvation? Guys, the reason why we have enough food to eat, believe it or not, is because men are not afraid to be masculine. Fishing and hunting is one of the most dangerous professions in the world. Look it up. It is extremely dangerous. And sure enough, it appeals to masculine men. Over 90% of people in fishing and hunting are men. Women don't want it. In fact, those professions are begging for women to come in because they want to increase diversity. Women are like, nope. In fact, women are overrepresented in uh, the safest jobs. Kindergarten teacher, kindergarten teacher, uh, dentist, dental assistant, whatever. You know, nutrition. And that's not a knock on women. You know, they're playing to their strengths. They're very impassioned. Uh, they have a lot of empathy. They're, 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 they're gentle. They're good at analyzing. They're good at, uh, you know, um, putting themselves in other people's shoes. All the qualities that are, that are associated with being a, uh, a feminine person, women are making it, you know, making the best out of it, which is good. It's biology. Yes, there's some society, uh, there's, there's some cultural inputs, but it's mainly rooted in biology. But anyway, I digress. Over 90% of people who work in fishing and hunting are men. And it's one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. They go there knowing that they have a high chance of dying. But they do it anyway because they have a sense of duty. They have a sense of responsibility. They have a sense of honor. They're bold. They're courageous. Testosterone is making them do this. Right? Agriculture. Over 80% of farmers, agriculture, are men. And it's a very hard job. Obviously, recently, we, you know, we, uh, because of the Industrial Revolution, it's not as hard as it used to be years ago, but it's still hard nonetheless. Right? And it was even harder before the Industrial Revolution. But men woke up, rolled up their sleeves, went to work, and made sure that you sons of bitches have enough food on your table. These are not jobs that most people want to do unless they have a very high degree of quote-unquote toxic masculinity. Next! One of the number one thing that protects us from disease, it's not the doctor, it's not the nurse, no. It's the people who take care of waste, your garbage collector, the people who work in underground sewers. You go to any nation throughout history where they didn't have a, a, a you know, well-functioning sewage system or whatever, disease was rampant. One of the number one ways to have a healthy society is to have men, to have, actually to have people who are willing to do the dirty work. And guess what? Over 90%, it's actually way higher than 90, but again, over 90% of people who work in these fields are men. Are you surprised? Most women are like, hell to the no, I don't want this job. 
And they try to get women there. Once again, look it up. They try to get women there. Women are like, nope, no thank you. But somebody has to do the job, right? This is a guy in India here. This is in the Western world. And look, who wants to work in the sewer? Who wants to work there? Who wants to work there? The reason why they go is because they have a sense of duty. And they're like, somebody has to do it. Also, they're trying to move up. And I'm not going to bring up, you know, uh, educational attainment and all that. You know, that was a place of role. But really, men are really, men are ready to pick up jobs that nobody wants to do to keep society going. Whether they do it for selfish reasons, whether they do it, you know, from a sense of duty, doesn't matter. They're the ones out there keeping us safe and healthy. And again, this is not a knock on women, by the way. This is not a knock on women. Women have their own strengths and they play to those strengths. Like I said, you know, to, to prove to you that I'm not against women, all of these men who are doing all these wonderful jobs and are keeping us going, well, 100% of those men were birthed by who? By women. So I give women their credit. I just don't like it when men get thrown under the bus as if they're not contributing to society. You know? Get rid of the garbage collectors, get rid of the sewer workers, get rid of all the, the plumbers, all the guys who help, you know, uh, with sanitation and all that, and in no time, there'll be an epidemic. But yet, they're the unsung heroes. And the very courage that brings them into the sewers is now called toxic. No pun intended. Next. The dangers of nature. Toxic masculinity protects us from nature. Right? Over 90% of people who provide you electricity, who do construction, who loggers, even firefighters, are men. Once again, are you surprised that over 90% of firefighters are men, over 90% of construction workers are men, over 90% of loggers are men, right? People who work on power lines, right? Look it up if you don't believe me. The most dangerous jobs, again, fulfilled by men. And you think they, you think this guy, this nigga right here, look dangling in the fucking sky. Such a dangerous fucking job. Not only he can fall, he can get electrocuted, whatever. What pushes them to these jobs? If it's not that fucking testosterone. If it's not the masculinity. You think you could do these jobs and be emotional and weak? No. Right? But yet we enjoy the safety that these guys provide. We enjoy the, the you know, uh, the world that they built for us. But we're going to point fingers and say, oh, you guys are toxic? Screw you. Right? Anybody who has the nerves to call toughness and, and the desire to seek power and status, anybody that has the nerves to call that toxic should fuck off. You guys are so, a bunch of hypocrites. Next, protection from animals. See, people forget that the world is a dangerous place. There are wild animals out there. Right? If you're walking, you know, you know, down the street and a fucking bear comes out of nowhere, the water evolutionary pass, right? You were fucked. We forget that it was not cities and buildings everywhere. There were animals there, wild animals everywhere. But man built the world. Man made the world safe. Man drew boundaries. Back then they had to risk their lives to save the tribe. If a bear broke in think about it, back in those days, right? Because we were we were we were hunter gatherers for most of our existence, right? Over ninety nine percent of our existence. You know I'm a history nurse. So I, I love going back to history. Right? And we we're Homo sapiens for over three hundred thousand years. When a lion broke into the camp or a bear or whatever, who do you think came forward and fought off the wild animal? You think we sent the women up, up front? The pregnant women? No. The men came forward, risked their lives. In fact, that's why when you look at Neanderthals and when we dig up bones, usually the men died horrible deaths. They died hunting or they died protecting or they died fighting other men, whatever. So the reason why we don't have a bunch of wild animals running around, in fact, right now, as you're watching this video, if you, if you look out the window, you see a bunch of lions loose or a bunch of bears loose. I don't know, maybe they broke out of a zoo or some shit, whatever. Who are we going to send to put them down or capture them or whatever? You tell me. A bunch of women or a bunch of men? And again, this is not, a, this is not an attack on women. I'm just bringing out the facts. And keep in mind, we have guns now. We have tranquilizers. Imagine if we didn't have guns and we didn't have tranquilizers, whatever, and you had to get up close and personal. Who would we send? We'll send men. And I'm perfectly fine with that because men are actually expendable. Men are expendable. Men can't have babies, right? One man can repopulate like a whole fucking town, if not the whole world, but one woman, one woman can. So I get why men are expendable. But we embrace that, we accept that, and we sacrifice ourselves for the betterment of society. Can we at least get some fucking respect? 
Right? I'm in my apartment now. If a bear breaks in, who's going to go? My girlfriend? My daughter? Or me? In order for me to face a situation where I know there's a 99% chance where I'm going to get my shit snapped up, I need to have some degree of confidence, toughness. I need to stay calm. I need to be stoic. And I'm being told that that's actually bad. Next, income. We don't want to make money, right? Problem is, we live in a very competitive world where for every dollar you want, somebody else wants the exact same dollar. So we have to be competitive. We got to have high testosterone. We got to be industrious. We got to be conscientious, right? The man at the top of the world, you know, had to work extremely hard to get there. And for us to even come close to a quarter of their wealth, a percentage of their wealth, we also have to work our asses off. That requires a degree of toughness, a degree of ambition, testosterone, the hormone that motivates us to become better and to fight for status. If we don't use that, we stay poor. But we're being told that that's a bad thing, right? We shouldn't be ambitious. We shouldn't strive for the top, right? It's funny. Everybody wants money. But nobody wants to do the work that it takes to get that money. So why are we telling men that they should be they shouldn't be ambitious? But at the same time, if the guy's not ambitious and he doesn't make money because he doesn't want to compete, then we're gonna mock him for being broke, right? Gonna be like, oh, you're broke, bitch. Ha ha, you broke, you broke. Right? Make up your mind. Don't tell men that they shouldn't be ambitious. But at the same time, you know all the benefits that are awarded to men who are actually ambitious and became top earners. Ambition should never be a bad thing. Next, women, sexual selection. The reason why men are masculine, the single number one reason why men are masculine, meaning they are strong, they are ambitious, right? They're courageous. is because those are the ones that women picked. Those are the ones that your whole ass great, 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 great grandmother Picked. When women are given a choice in every culture you look at, they always pick the most competent males. This is well known. I'm from Africa. You see it in Africa. You see it in Asia. You see it in Europe. And it has not changed. Women pick the man at the top. It doesn't matter what the culture is. It doesn't matter what the job is. It could be, um, I worked so many jobs when I was young, so many jobs. And it was the same thing. When I worked at Walmart, Kroger, I worked as a, a teaching assistant. I, I worked as a, a a tutor. I worked so many jobs and it was the same pattern. They always picked whatever that job was, whatever that profession or whatever that, that store was. The women always went for the guy at the top. The supervisor, they went for the guy that, uh, you know, that was just the most competent male. Is that a coincidence? No, it's ingrained into their brain. And I already made a video explaining why women are so picky. You can watch that video. Right? And I also made a video about, you know, it's called Your Ancestor Was the Alpha Male. And I explain why being an alpha male is actually a good thing. And I give the true definition of an alpha male, which is not a bully, obviously, but simply the most valuable person in the group. And remember that study, right? That found that 8,000 years ago, one man reproduced for every 17 women, meaning the vast majority of men did not pass on their genes. And the one man that passed on his genes for every 17 women, who do you think it was? You think he was the softest guy, right? Who just sat there and, and, and clapped all the girls' cheeks? No. He had something. The same pattern that we see today. He was valuable. He was good at something. Right? Women are hypergamous. We all know that. They pick the man at the top. So by telling the guy out there that he shouldn't be ambitious, he shouldn't be competent, he shouldn't be strong, whatever, you're pretty much telling him that he shouldn't pass on his genes. Because the statistics don't lie. Women have a minimum income threshold for the guys that they marry and date. You could be the most handsome guy in the world. You could be the most emotional guy in the world. If you make $5,000 a year, huge chance that you're not going to get the girl of your dreams. And that's a fact. Right? Women are the reason why men are masculine. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them because the world is a dangerous place. Right? Throughout our evolution and past, think about it. Again, watch that video I made about, you know, why women are picky. The world is so dangerous for women. And if you put yourself in the female shoes, you get your period every month, cramping, full of pain. Once you're pregnant, you got to go through nine months of pregnancy. 
you know, you, it, it hinders your ability to, to, to hunt. It hinders your ability to, to get food. On top of that, you need more calories because you're pregnant. A whole human, a whole nigga's growing in your belly, right? And when the baby's born, he's louder than the motherfucker. He's always crying and attracting predators and prey, right? You can't leave him to go hunt as a female because, again, the moment you leave him, an ego is going to snap his shit up or whatever, right? Because of that, women evolve to have a strong man by the side so that the guy can provide for them while they're pregnant, so the guy can protect them from other men, other predators. It's common sense. It's common sense. And that's why to this day, women are still programmed to pick strong, competent men. And the final reason why men should be masculine, depression. Guys, I fought with depression ever since I was ever since I could fucking remember, right? And I told you why before, right? I, I had the the I had a mother that I wouldn't even wish on my worst enemy, right? Grew up without my father in the home. Grew up with an extremely abusive mother, and I've tried to forgive her so many times, but Jesus, she would not stop. I mean, again, I could make a whole different video about that, but so no father in the home, abusive mother, bullies all around you. At home, you can't find peace. Outside, you can't find peace. Well, what's the result of that? Chronic depression. I am everything I am today, as tough as nails, because I had to decide to become a man. I had no one to show me. I had no one to, to, to lead me into manhood. I didn't have a rite of passage. Pain was my teacher. Trauma was my teacher. And every time I struggled with depression, it's something that would never go away, obviously. Right? When you have a fucked up childhood and your mom is, was, is literally the worst person in your life, you, you never heal. You never fucking heal. Right? Because even my friends, even some of the worst guys out there, at least they had a loving mother that was there for them. Worse for me, it was the opposite. I, I, I literally spent years of my life trying to undo that mental damage. But you want to know what kept me going? When I wanted to just give up and make a ton of excuses as to why I should, I should, just, I should just stop? What kept me going was the ideals of masculinity. Reading about the heroes of old, reading about, you know, that, that that's why I love reading about cultures, you know. That's why I read the Bible, the Quran, I read, you know, um, uh, myths, uh, I, I read uh, mythologies, you know, wherever I found heroes. Even Dragon Ball Z as a kid, you know, comics, whatever. I always looked towards, I always looked at the dominant male that overcame adversity, and that's what kept me going. The therapist couldn't help me, the doctors couldn't help me. I just kept telling myself, Jonathan, man up, man up, man up. See, a lot of people don't even know my, my past because I rarely talk about it. Why? Because I don't want to give people excuses. I don't want to sound like I'm giving an excuse. Right? But one of the best cures, and again, I can only speak for myself. I'm not saying don't go get help. If you're depressed, go get all the help you want. I don't want to get canceled. But what saved me personally was the ideals of manhood. Every time I wanted to complain about my fucked up childhood, I always remember Jonathan, somebody had it worse and made it. Jonathan, the world was so much worse back then. History taught me that, wow, people actually had it bad. You can't overcome this. Man up, man up, man up. And that's how I was able to survive. That's how I was able to accomplish so many things, even though all the odds were against me. Because I always told myself, Jonathan, somebody had it worse. And even if you were the one that, that had it the worst, you're a man. You have a duty. Become responsible. Become strong. Every time I feel depression creeping up on me, what saves me is the belief that men should be tough. It's literally that simple. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you shouldn't get help or none of that. No, by any means get help. In fact, maybe I would have turned out better if I would have kept seeking more help but from my personal experience that's what allowed me to survive is the belief that I should be strong that I have a duty and that I should overcome everything that's thrown my way if I had grown up in this pussy ass generation that says that oh you should cry you should you should it's okay don't be tough oh my god oh my god I would have jumped off a bridge a long time ago because, God, I went through so much shit. So, again, these are 10 reasons why I believe that men should hold on to their masculinity. If that's the way you guys want to define toxic masculinity, right? Let's go back. 
right? If you want to define toxic masculinity as being tough and and being powerful and and uh, not and you know not being emotional, or whatever. Oh, I want all of that toxic masculinity then, because as men, there are so many times where we want to quit, and what keeps us going is because we have that subconscious oath to our masculinity. We're like, no, no, keep going, keep fighting. Why do you think men love heroes? Why do you think we love Superman and Batman and Spider-Man and Iron Man? Why do you think we love those those fictional heroes? You know? Why do you think we, we're inspired by, by, by these movies and when we hear about, you know, uh, all these historic Achilles, Leonidas, all the Hercules? It's in our DNA. Because our fathers, our ancestors had to be badass. Our male ancestors had to be badass for, for them to pass on their genes and for them to survive in this chaotic world. And now that they've conquered the obstacles, now you want to tell us to be soft and weak? Suck my dick. Right? Anyway, guys, I'm sorry that this is the way I had to come out of hibernation, but man, I had to talk about this topic. It it, it burned me to the core. Because I told you, the whole time I thought, you know, toxic masculinity just meant, you know, the bad things like, you know, rape, sexual harassment, bullying, all that stuff. I had no idea that they had the nerves to call these traits here toxic. Right? But anyway, guys, again, hope this video helps. Comment your opinion below. Join the Discord. Join the Reddit. You know. And remember, Team 3D Alpha, Dominance, Discipline, Direction. That's what I believe in. I believe men should be dominant, right? Which means strong, competent. I believe they should be experts at what they do. I believe men should be disciplined, meaning they should have honor. They should have courage. They should adhere to their values and rules as long as it doesn't obviously hurt others. They should have daily routines that make them better every day. They should be disciplined pretty much. Right? And obviously I believe in direction. That men should be ambitious. Men should have, you know, a vision. Obviously a noble vision. Try to change the world. Try to heal people's pains. That's what I believe in. Dominance, discipline, direction. And somehow we live in a world where that's considered a bad thing. Oof, I gotta stop this video. But anyway, guys. See you guys in the comment section. I'm out. All right, guys. Don't forget to like or share the video. Subscribe and hit the bell. And buy my HSP Nucleus of a Low Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workout splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book you're also going to get free copies of any future edition so visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40 percent off coupon code nucleus of the lord or you could just buy the share at full price all right guys i'm out of here